Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Gabe Monroy, who's the Chief Product Officer at DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean provides developers, startups, and SMBs with cloud infrastructure as a service platforms. And Gabe joins us today to give us a little more insight on the company's innovations and market presence. Thanks for joining us today, Gabe, and welcome to the Jam. Thanks for having me. No worries. So um, just to um, start off, for people that are unaware of DigitalOcean, what are some of your key products and solutions? Well, uh, for those who are unaware of DigitalOcean, we're the cloud for builders. Uh, builders are developers and small businesses who are building digital products. Um, we serve builders throughout their journey, whether they're learning and experimenting, maybe building a new application or scaling their business in the cloud. Um, hyperscalers, uh, you know, who builders often look at as well, they're often focused on large enterprise companies. At DigitalOcean, we're really focused on smaller teams and smaller businesses who are looking to build and scale applications. Our portfolio includes a pretty wide range of compute, storage, networking, and database products. Uh, so for example, we have managed Kubernetes, object storage, serverless functions, you know, lots more in that vein. Um, just a few months ago, we acquired a company called Cloudways, adding managed hosting for companies who want to simple and zero maintenance way for running WordPress or things like WooCommerce in the cloud. Um, we also take special pride in our documentation and our support, uh, which is truly catered to the needs of small teams and small businesses. Absolutely. Yeah, no, we can't stress the importance enough of uh, small businesses in this climate. In terms of some of the most uh, major recent innovations and improvements that you've made uh, there at DigitalOcean, can you tell me a little bit more about those? Sure, there's a lot. Uh, we launched a Sydney data center uh, just recently. In fact, about two weeks ago, it's connected to our backbone network. It's got 400 gigabyte, uh, gigabits per uh, second of connectivity, uh, low latency links to California and to Singapore, as well as great domestic connectivity uh, uh, inside of Australia and New Zealand area. It's got reduced latency and, and jitter and packet loss. So really exciting to see the investments uh, in, in the Sydney and, and New Zealand area. We also have some new performance enhancements to our storage products. Our volumes uh, storage has been updated to provide 50% increase of IOPS and throughput. Uh, and for our object storage uh, product, uh, DigitalOcean Spaces, we've doubled the request per second uh, to 500 reads per second and 300 writes per second. Um, on the Kubernetes front, we now offer a highly available control plane, more resiliency. Um, Kubernetes is super powerful, and, and we see Kubernetes on DigitalOcean growing at 70% year over year. It's extremely popular. Um, and you know, customers want to have a, a resilient and, and highly available control plane to support that. So it's something we've added recently. Um, we've also added serverless functions. Uh, DigitalOcean functions are fast, scalable. They're a great, great way to uh, run code blocks that run in response to event-based trips. Triggers. Uh, you can create functions for a variety of purposes, serverless APIs for your web and mobile apps being the most popular. Awesome. Some very exciting uh, things happening there at DigitalOcean. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the issues in the market that um, your uh, company supports, what are some of the trends you're kind of seeing at the moment? That's a great question. You know, the global population of developers is estimated to reach 71 million in 2030. That's an increase of 44 million developers from where we're at today. So with these numbers, we really need to help developers learn all this new technology that they're being exposed to, everything that's out there. The other trend that we see is that despite this big increase in developers, IDC still projects that we're going to have a shortage of 4 million developers in 2025, just two years from now. So to counter this developer shortage, builders need products that are easier to use and allow them to do more with less. You know, it's important you know, for me to remember, you know, I come from a startup background, you know, this next generation of developers, uh, small to medium sized businesses, startups, they're uniquely positioned to influence the world, share their ideas, innovations, build new digital products. Many of these folks will start off looking at the big cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft, Google being you know, a good example. What they often find though, is that the needs of small businesses aren't a priority at those big cloud providers. I know I, I worked for a long time as a VP at Azure. Those products, they're built for enterprises. So they tend to be complex with lots of features that cater to large IT departments versus the small product teams that we serve at DigitalOcean. Pricing at the big clouds is also pretty confusing with really complex metering. So your bill looks like you know, sort of the utility bill for a housing complex versus something you can you know, sort of internalize and understand. Um, the prices also themselves, they tend to be more expensive than the equivalent products at DigitalOcean. That's true across compute, bandwidth, and storage. 
we're just cheaper. But the biggest differentiator at DigitalOcean is simplicity. Simplicity is core to our values and it's apparent in everything we do. It shines in our products, uh, which are the easiest to use, I'd argue, in the cloud industry, and also in our pricing, which is generally cheaper than the hyperscalers, but also predictable so you know exactly what your bill is going to be at the end of the month. Fantastic. And you mentioned, obviously, the uh, data center previously. Um, what is uh, your other presence like in the APEC region? Well, we've had a large and engaged customer base in Australia and New Zealand uh, for a long time now, but we've never had dedicated infrastructure in that part of the world. So the latency you know, is not optimal, right? But that's all changed with the launch of our, our Sydney data center, which happened just uh, you know, less than two weeks ago. So our, our Sydney data center is just going to make it easier for customers to provide great experiences to end users uh, you know, in, in the Australia and New Zealand region. That's true, by the way, for folks who are in that region, looking to serve that region, but also to DigitalOcean's global customer base who's increasingly looking to serve uh, you know, the Sydney and, and uh, Australia and New Zealand markets overall, uh, not to mention you know, markets in, in the broader uh, Pacific region. So putting a data center in Sydney was really a no-brainer, uh, given the growing cloud computing market there and the incredible startup and developer ecosystem uh, that's budding there. Uh, in fact, I was actually just in Sydney two weeks ago you know, to do the ribbon cutting for this data center, celebrate the launch. And you know, I personally enjoyed meeting the startup community there. I was at the Sydney Startup Hub, um, you know, including uh, meeting some DigitalOcean customers uh, from that part of the world. Uh, customers like Inspectablock, who provide a blockchain infrastructure platform running on DO. Movebot, a solution for moving large amounts of data across different cloud solutions, uh, G Suite, Object Storage. Uh, they're actually based out of Auckland, I believe, in, in New Zealand. Uh, Buzzy, uh, another great uh, company in the, in the region, a low-code solution that turns Figma designs into working applications. Uh, really cool stuff. All these are customers in Australia and New Zealand who are running on DigitalOcean today, and from the sounds of it after meeting with them, all planning to spin up more applications in this new Sydney data center very soon. Well, it's fantastic to hear. And in terms of, obviously, people are going to want to get in touch with you guys. What's the best way to get in touch? Well, I, I, you know, lots of different ways. I would recommend checking out our tutorials at the digitalocean.com slash community site. That'll be a great way to help understand how to get up and running, you know, uh, take a look at, at some of our offerings there. Um, you can also check us out on Twitter at DigitalOcean is our handle and myself at Gabe underscore Monroy is my Twitter handle. Um, I, I respond to lots of different comments. My DMs are open all the time. So feel free to hit me up. Oh, awesome. Look, thank you so much for joining us today, Gabe. We really look forward to hearing more from DigitalOcean in the future. Thanks for having me.